To tell you something that you probably already know, I talk to a lot of folks. I listen. Right? I hear a lot of stories. I'm always interested where people come from. What are they thinking? And I've never met a boring person. I've just met people I haven't had enough time to listen to to, to understand what's interesting. And something else you already know, probably know is that as I, I listen, um, I find myself caring deeply for the health of communities. For as I listen, I hear deep concerns about uh, civil structures, civic groups, local governance, struggling, fraying, uh, drifting. Um, and this concern of mine for the health of communities extends to one of the largest communities that we are part of, the nation. My concern for the health of the nation is not rooted in, in, in any political party. I am far more concerned about the nature of our politics. Right? When we say we the people are seeking to form a more perfect union, how's that going? This experiment in democracy, how's that unfolding? We had another step forward together in this ex experiment this week, and we had an election. And I'm going to describe what happened. You know, Friday uh, on Dragnet, just the facts, ma'am. I want to give you just the facts, right? And, and, and if any facts are off, please raise your hand and say, Andy, I think you got that wrong. There are at least two corrections you're going to hear based upon people who said, that some, said something in Green City. So I don't, I don't promise I'm getting everything right. All I can promise you is I, I'm, this is as accurate as I can tell you. All right, so here is what happened in this election. Half the people didn't vote. Half of eligible adults, 46.6%, uh, did not vote, which is shocking, but also there were 868 fewer polling locations. In large parts of the country, it was a lot harder to vote. Of the country, half voted, and, and then 25.6% voted for Hillary. 25.5% voted for Donald. Hillary has won about a two million, two million count uh, lead in the popular vote, and, and Donald has won uh, 290 electoral votes to Clinton's 232. The, the popular vote count hasn't been finalized yet because there's still parts of California that are uh, counting, so that number is actually going up. It might be as high as 2.1 million. And then Gary Johnson got 1.7 percent. If you look at the broad trends of who voted which way, there are some trends that we're seeing. Um, and if ever there was a year not to trust polling, this would be it. Uh, but there were some trends that this typical Trump voter, the broad strokes would be white, male, and older, and the typical Clinton voter would be black or Hispanic, female, younger, college educated. But the most striking breakdown that we can be fairly certain of was by geography. Rural counties voted for Donald Trump. Suburban and city counties voted for Hillary Clinton. Right? And so what I think we can say accurately is that the we of we the people are profoundly split by geography. Now, is that an, have I misspoken? Have I gotten that all fairly accurate? Just making sure I've, okay, good. Um, I think that this split is a failure. I think that this, this deep geographic split is a, is a problem, and it seems to be rooted in a deep fear. As I'm listening to descriptions, uh, half of the people who identify as Democratic fear that anyone with the Republican policies, the Republican policies will destroy the nation. And, and the flip of that as well, that those who are Republican, if half of Republicans fear that Democrats, their dem Democratic policies would destroy the nation. There is this deep-seated fear of, of the other side. And, and I have been caught in the middle of this in a way that, that I should have seen coming. It's been, it has deeply affected me. As you know, I'm a child of the city and a servant of, of rural America raised in the suburbs, and now I, I serve in rural Missouri, and I intend to the first of my life. And so I am connected to people in blue counties and red, and I know just as many people who think that Obama was the very worst president ever, as I know the same number of people who are terrified that Trump is about to be the worst president ever, right? And so I find myself in between. I looked at Facebook for the first time this last Friday. I've been chasing kids in the Magic Kingdom, right? So I looked at Facebook for the first time this last Friday. And there tends to be like four different responses going on. I saw most of, two of them in the large part. I saw 
triumphalism, this gloating triumphalism about the fall of the House of Clinton, no more of lying Clinton, etc. I saw this gloating triumphalism. There's a couple people I saw, so let's just get behind Trump and get moving. I saw a lot of fear. I listened to a black mother be worried for how can she raise her black son in America today safely. I, I read stories of children showing up in school who weren't white, who, who are not white, being told, you have to go back to your country, Trump won, we can kick you out now. Right? I heard stories uh, of women who, who are just flabbergasted that someone who speaks of women's bodies in that way is now their president. I mean, I, I heard stories of fear and pain. And then the, the last response that I, you, you see the pictures of is just so, some overblown, stupid, that's judgmental, let me try it again. Some, maybe it is stupid. Some, there are some protests that have just gone, kind of gone over the top, right? And, and so I, I saw a lot of pain and, and, and as, as I started looking around. And uh, some of you may or may not have been exposed to any of this, and that's part of the challenge, right? If everyone you know voted the same way you voted, that, then that's part of the challenge that America faces because we, we are sorted by... Um, rural and city. There's a book called The Big Sort that gets into this, how we as a country have sorted ourselves into people who are just like us. How do we respond to something like this? I find no wiser words to respond than in James. You must under, there's not a lot of musts in the Bible, are there? Here's a must. You must understand this. Let everyone be quick to listen and slow to speak. I have not listened enough to have an opinion worth having. Right? I, I have looked on Facebook, but right? Facebook, right? I have not made eye contact with enough people over coffee to sit down and listen and to hear and to understand. I have not listened to you. And so I don't have an opinion. I have not listened. As I have said recently, and this is part of listening to the community, what I value most is community gathered around Jesus. It's actually what I was planning on preaching today. It works out very fortuitously, thank God. Uh, I've been apart from community this last week while I've been traveling, and I'd set aside this Sunday and next to look at how do we talk about success as a church, and the first Sunday to look at how we as a community, first you have, a, have to have a community gathered together before you can talk about what does it look for that community to be successful. And so I'd already figured that this would be a Sunday to talk about community. And, uh, and you know, I've missed you greatly while I've been gone. I have missed being in community because I felt the absence of it. I was in, in an airport. Who here has been in an airport? Right? Is an airport a place of grace and peace and patience? No. It turns us into jerks, right? We're all in a hurry. Right? And, and we got to the Magic Kingdom. And, and, we got to the, and you can spend all day being magical. I will tell you the one thing that you cannot make magical no matter how, how much pixie dust you, you apply to it. You know what that is? Waiting for a bus at 9 o'clock at night with two tired children who just want to stop walking. Right? That You can't make that magical. And I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit what I'm about to say. Right? Because we're waiting for the bus. And you're in a line, long line. And someone pulls up on a scooter. Right? And if someone pulls up on a scooter, that has cost you five to ten minutes. Because the bus has to lower, the ramp has to flip out, load the scooter, bolt the scooter, load the person, flip the ramp up, tilt it back up, lower the bus differently, open the doors. And around here, if someone pulls up on a scooter, you know why they're on a scooter, right? A bull got him a couple years ago, their knee doesn't work right, they're on a scooter. Like, you know why. But when you're in Florida, and you're going to have to wait five to ten minutes for someone you've never met before. Can I just confess that I was not at my most graceful as someone pulled up and I thought, <sighs> right? When you're apart from community, oh man, it's hard. I, I realized how much I was missing community when I met someone. I made a, made a friend. I know, surprise. But um, I sat down for a cup of coffee on Sunday morning because Disney doesn't have church. You might have noticed this. So I couldn't go to church. It's very hard, right? And so I got a cup of coffee in my Bible. I went and found a table. God gave me a person right next to me, a table over. It was the spouse of a Methodist pastor. The pastor was out running a marathon, and there was a, someone I could talk to, and we could just talk, and it was just, thank God, right? And so 
I am so glad to be home, uh, to be among community. I am thankful to be back and to have landed in the middle of the Harvest Fest is, is wonderful, to be surrounded by, by folk again. To be part uh, of a community, to be gathered together as a people following Jesus, I believe that is the, the way that we find our way forward in any situation. Right? As the church continues to do what the church has always done, to gather people in the name of Jesus to be, to be more like him, I think that's the best response, the best place to respond to any election, whether it was an election four years ago or, or it will be the election 12 years hence. For elections are temporary. And when I say Jesus is Lord, that is a permanent political reality. As I've said before and I say it again, my politics is I follow Jesus. That, that, that's it. That's my politics. Uh, and and I, I mean, for me to say that I follow Jesus and Jesus is Lord, that means something, right? That when, when we say that together, that gives us a set of practices. To say that Jesus is Lord means we know where we need to be on a Sunday morning because following Jesus is a team sport, right? I can't follow Jesus without you. Right? It, it doesn't make sense for me to say I follow Jesus unless I'm with you on a Sunday morning because Jesus calls disciples plural. Right? You can't follow Jesus alone. And so we gather together, with, and we have, there's a set of virtues and practices. We read, we pray, we forgive, we, are, we seek to be humble, we seek to, to serve, to be patient. Right? To be together as people who follow Jesus is a meaningful thing. Right? It, it, it's a meaty idea. There's a lot to that concept, that idea. And we live in an age when the ways of being community, the ways of naming ourselves are getting kind of thin, right? When I say that there's some meat on the bones of following Jesus, right, the opposite of that is you think about, for example, what does it mean to be American today? What binds together all of America as Americans? Especially after this election when it has shown us how divided we are, right? And, and this is a non-rhetorical question. If you have an answer, I want to know, what binds all Americans together? Right? At one point in time, that was enough. At one point in, not, in time, in a previous generation, being American was a su substantial enough idea. There was enough of a sense of shared practices. Apple pie, NFL, everyone speaks English, right? There was this idea uh, of what it meant to be American that held people together. And maybe there will be again one day, but this week, I don't think there was much. My hope, the best thing I can say this week, this morning, is that Jesus is Lord, and I follow him, and that's what matters most to me. This is my politics. I hope it is your politics as well. And I hope that the lordship of Jesus Christ is always increasing in your life. That each year, more of our life, more of our hopes, more of our dreams, more of our energy, more of our desires are formed by Jesus. For, that, for the more that we are wrapped up in him, the more that we are shaped by Jesus, the more that we have to offer a world that is divided. As we practice what Romans 12 describes, we, don't, we are not to be conformed to the world. We are not to be conformed to the world and its divisions, and it is divided, but we are to be transformed so that we are doing what Jesus would do. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony, not repaying evil with evil, but overcoming evil with good. And so, as Jesus says, we do render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, so we pay our taxes, we vote, right? We, we praise what is good in our government, we challenge what is not. But far more importantly, we render unto God what is God's. And what is God's is the very core of who we are and what we care about. As God's people, we are working towards being a foretaste of the feast to come. A place where God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? That's what we're working towards. And so here's what I might suggest a good idea for this, this particular week. Can you listen to more music than news? Right? Listen to things that are beautiful and not things that aggravate. Can we spend less time talking and more time listening this week? listening to God in prayer, and listening to each other. 
can we devote more energy towards the things of Jesus this week than to the politics of our nation? Not because the politics of our nation are unimportant, but because the politics of Jesus are eternal. America is temporary. It's good, but it's temporary. Jesus is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. And the more clear we can be about that, the more we can live that, the more we can offer a world that needs to hear it. Jesus is Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>